matters STDs and we were able to look at super gonorrhea and we learned a lot from Dr. Derek and today he is here with us and we are going to learn much and now on a different topic we are talking matters miscarriage or, or abortion. abortion and, and, and I know what comes, comes to mind when you hear the word abortion, abortion. I, know I know it's a word, a word that so many, so many of us don't want to hear and it's a word that has been uh, connoted uh, evil and all those kind of things but today with Dr. Derek we are going to learn and understand what is the relationship between miscarriage and abortion and what exactly is the definition of this uh, abortion or rather miscarriage so before we continue as usual we are going to start with a word of prayer Heavenly Father we are thankful for you giving us another chance to come and learn on matters health and uh, we are ready to learn on the area of miscarriage and we pray that you may give us your wisdom and that your people will be impacted, God, and that our lives, Jehovah King of all the glory, will transform my mother, Father God, to the better. We thank you and we pray that you may be with us to the end of this uh, program. In Jesus' name we pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Amen. I am Amen. your host, Edith Commander, and now I'm going to, to introduce to you Dr. Derek without much ado. Uh, Dr. Yes. Habariyako Leo. Salama sana. Karibu sana. Yeah, yeah, today, today, today you we have, have uh, we want, we want uh, uh, the this, this viewers, viewers uh -huh. to learn about uh, miscarriage okay. and uh, abortion. Mm. And uh, from what I know, as we grew up, abortion, abortion was, was that, that uh, term. term. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That term that uh, you hear, abortion, it's just something that we even don't want to discuss it's or we true. just don't want to have a lot to talk about mm. it. So maybe somebody outside there is wondering, a Christian television, what do they have to do with abortion, you know? Yeah, so maybe we should start there, just say hi to the people and now get to defining these terms for us. Okay. Good morning, uh, good people. This is Dr. Dedi Kwanjiro. And uh, we are here at Missy Television uh, on the doctor's desk where your happiness starts with your health. You're much welcome to this program, and we hope by the end of it all, it shall have helped someone. Karibu sana. Thank you. So now to the definition, we need to understand miscarriage, we need to understand abortion, and uh, as usual, before we continue, we are live on YouTube, Nisi Television, and on Facebook, it's Nisi Television. Go there, ask us questions, the doctor is here and ready to answer your questions, your concerns, your comments, your reaction. And uh, we will walk together. Thank you so much, Dr. Karim. Now, what is miscarriage? Uh, now, we'll be, we'll be using both names. Huh? Mm -hmm. The miscarriage mm -hmm. and uh, abortion. Uh, meaning that the symptoms say the same thing? Yes, only that the, the way of understanding of a layman of abortion mm -hmm. is what is missing. But we are going to understand it uh, all the same. Mm -hmm. That is why we are here. Mm -hmm. So miscarriage, uh, I, I will start by saying it is either a spontaneous mm -hmm. or an induced. So it can be spontaneous. Spontaneous means, you know, it happened naturally. There were no trigger, triggering forces. Mm. It was not uh, intentional. And then there is induced. It means someone must have taken an action towards the miscarriage or the abortion. Mm -hmm. So it is either spontaneous or induced termination of pregnancy mm -hmm. or expulsion of products of pregnancy before viability. Before viability means that before 20 weeks of gestation or 20 weeks of pregnancy mm -hmm. in developed countries and 28 weeks of pregnancy in developing countries. There is a difference. Oh, there's a difference. Yes. Okay. So Why? it is uh, termination of pregnancy or expulsion of product of conception before viability, that is before 20 weeks of gestation in developed countries and 28 weeks of gestation in developing countries like Kenya. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, 
if a child is born before 20 weeks and with with a weight of less than 500 milligrams or a half kg so that is what miscarriage or abortion is okay yes. so, so it has to be induced or spontaneous so miscarriage and abortion simply <coughs> means the same thing it's true okay i know someone so outside there is surprised <laughs> and uh don't don't hesitate to ask questions don't hesitate to ask for clarification that's mm. why the doctor is here so now we have learned that uh, miscarriage and abortion are uh, uh, related terms. They just uh, and we have been told that it's either induced or it is spontaneous, mm. meaning that uh, maybe somebody was just working their day and they did uh, they got a miscarriage, mm. or rather maybe somebody something happened and maybe a pill uh, they, they they took a pill or something yeah. or something was induced into them mm. uh, and then it happened. Mm. So both of them just means the same thing. Mm -hmm. So now there's the I know like uh, I had told you yeah. as we have grown up especially here in Kenya maybe developing countries I don't know about others but I know the now that term there's that perspective of abortion mm. and I know it's not just in Kenya even in the developed countries it's there true. has been yeah. so as in a uh, broad discussion mm. over the abortion or miscarriage mm. and all that kind of a thing so what is the world uh, perspective huh? now that I know you understand it better mm. of that word abortion okay uh, I started by saying the perspective of a layman when the word abortion is termed, to them it means that this person intentionally terminated the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. He killed the baby. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All in Kiswahili, Alito Amimba. But uh, there are only two people who know what happens in, in, in this, in this uh, particular, particular uh, platform. It is the mother, and if it was spontaneous, the doctor who is at hand and therefore you know a, a mother might appear in hospital because uh, she sensed there is an element of uh, something that we can call trigger or uh, uh, you know she she at one point uh, experienced this kind of a bleeding or forced labor and therefore she had to seek medical advice but now along the way to the hospital or in the hospital setup uh, she experienced the miscarriage or the abortion but now the people who are left behind at home and in the village the moment she comes back and she is not you know you know mm -hmm. when, when they are pregnant there is that gravid uh, you can see it uh, because it is and grows uh, with age and therefore when when they the, when they discover that you know there is no more growth eh, the the now that is the mentality they have by saying that you know at the end katoa mimba you know that is what they say but i thank god because today we are going to understand what factors might lead to uh, these things called uh, abortion and this thing called miscarriage mm -hmm. because you, you will bear with me, a lot of them, they are not intentional. A lot of them, they, they just occur naturally because of some triggers or because of some causes or because of some factors that could not be preventable. And therefore, my viewer and my listener, I know today at least we'll have a broad uh, in, uh, spectrum of understanding and at the end of it all, you come to appreciate some of the things that you see, that you hear, and that you experience in the community. Thank okay. you. Okay, so we would say that the mentality of the, as in the world mentality mm. of the term, of the word that abortion, mm. it has been negative for, for, the, for quite some long time. Mm. And uh, today, as you have explained, seems like that is going to change. Mm -hmm. Maybe we are going to understand it from another angle. Mm. And uh, we look forward to learning. So okay. you have given us some examples of the how. Maybe this is how what happened so that uh, this spontaneous miscarriage or rather abortion mm. uh, occurred. Uh, so what are these categories of abortion? Okay. 
I think uh, <coughs> before before we start uh, we, we we start on the categories. Mm -hmm. Let us let us see how how the uh, in medical term or in research term we use the word epidemiology or prevalence of abortions mm. worldwide and in our country Kenya. Mm. But I will settle so much on our country because that is that is where that is are. where yeah that is mm. where we are. You'll be surprised mm -hmm. that in Kenya, of all pregnancies in one year, almost half of those pregnancies, almost forty-nine percent of those pregnancies, they are unintended. The, the the mother or both of the of the partners, they mm -hmm. they had not planned for them. Mm -hmm. And percent. yes, it's very true. Wali mm. Oh, uh, and and in those unintended pregnancies. 41% of them, they lead to, uh, they end up being aborted. Oh, you mean? So that is that is how that is how serious these issues are. That is why uh, I I see it's very important to we bring such issues on board, mm -hmm. so that we can we can get to know about it. So th yes, that that is how it happens. So you have said a whole 41%. Yes. You've said for twenty percent of now the forty nine percent or rather yes. the forty one percent of the whole uh in of, in, in of all unintended pregnancy, mm -hmm. the forty nine percent of them. Mm. Forty one percent of those unintended oh, okay. they end up being aborted. Okay, that's fair. Forty one percent and uh that's intentional. Uh, we, we can't tell mm -hmm. but we'll get to, to know about it. Okay. Yeah, we'll get to know about it. So now, <coughs> if I'm looking at uh, so so like it's either categories, it's either it's intentional or it's uh, spontaneous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now the reasons are the where the matter lies. Yes. Yes. Okay. What causes these spontaneous abortions? Okay. So uh, there are there are three categories of miscarriages or abortions. And one of them is now the spontaneous, the one that we are talking on right now. So there is spontaneous abortion, and spontaneous abortion is that kind, of that pregnancy that, you know, uh, it happened naturally. It was not the intention of the mother to, you know, to terminate the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. it, wa it was due to maybe maternal factors mm -hmm. or fetal factors or uh, uterine, uterine defects, um, abnormalities. Mm -hmm. And then there are factor, or even maternal diseases or chronic disorders of the mother. And uh, the, second, the second category of abortion, uh, it's now the induced abortion. And the induced abortion is categorized into two. It has two types. There is medical, mm. those that as medical practitioners we are allowed to, to terminate, mm -hmm. and then there is the illegal. That is now where now the true term abortion mm -hmm. lies in. Idea kutoa member deliberately. So that is induced. Induced has two: mm -hmm. medical, that is legal, and illegal, that is criminal. Mm -hmm. And then the third one, it's it's called repetitive or habitual mm -hmm. abortion. Repetitive or habitual. Uh, Abortion. This is an abortion mm -hmm. that uh, I know we'll come to, to to talk about it, but it's an abortion that happens. You know, if, uh, it's consecutive pregnancies being terminated. The first one, you lost it. The second one, you lost it. Now it's the third one. So that is what we we call habitual and that's, or repetitive. That's medical. Yeah. No. It's uh, being done by. A no. 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 Oh. It's we can term it as being spontaneous. But now it's uh, repetitive. It's repeating itself. Oh, because of maybe it. some uh, because of matter. factors. Uh, uh -huh. But you so, look into it. So you said uh, the cause of spontaneous uh, abortions. Okay. Now, spontaneous abortion. Mm. They the, 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 the are there are six of six types of spontaneous. But before we get to know the six types of spontaneous abortion. Mm. Let us get to understand the causes, because we find that in uh, those categories of spontaneous abortions, uh, the causes are most likely the same. Mm. So be, instead of us going on each uh, each type of spontaneous abortion and causes, let us group them together. 
the courses mm -hmm. and then we specify on those types. Mm -hmm. So the first cause of spontaneous abortions, it's, it's uh, okay, let us divide them into two. There are fetal factors or the factors of the, of the baby that mm -hmm. is inborn and then there is the maternal factors. So on uh, the fetal factors, one it is something we call chromosomal abnormalities. You know, when a child is, is being formed in the womb, there is the maternal chromosomes and there is the father chromosomes mm. that come into contact. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if these chromosomes, they have some kind of abnormalities in them, they might end up into abortion. Mm -hmm. So this is, that is what you're saying, it is not the mother's will, it, it just happened because of those factors. Mm -hmm. The second thing, apart from chromosomal abnormalities, it is congenital abnormalities or congenital factors. Congenital factors, uh, for example, uh, developmental factors. A child is, is being formed in the womb, mm. but there are de development uh, issues. Maybe some of the ribs, are, the, the, you know, they were not complete. The child is in the womb but with no head. The child is in the womb with no heart. The child is in, in the womb with no legs, you see? So such kind of factors will lead to something that we call placental separation. You know, when a child is being formed, there is that part of the womb, the uterus, that the child gets to attach him or herself in. Mm -hmm. So if you, they have those developmental factors, you know, it will affect the attachment of the baby to the mother mm. and that will lead to spontaneous abortion. So those are the two major uh, factors mm. from the baby that can lead to, uh, to spontaneous abortion. Then on the maternal side, that is where now the issue is because that is where many factors are. One, uh, you will find there is maternal infections. Mm. Yes, the mother might be having infections. You remember last time we were talking about, uh, when we were talking about gonorrhea, we said about PID, pelvic inflammatory diseases. Yeah. And we said they can lead to first trimester abortions. Mm. So that is one cause. I, I, that is an example of an infection mm. that might lead to abortion. Then there are other infections such as, I know, I know these terms might be, they might sound difficult, mm. but I trust I have to, to, uh, to, to, to say them. There are things like uh, toxoplasmosis, mm -hmm. uh, listeria mono, mono, monocytogenes, there are things like CMV, it's called cytomegalovirus. So those are the kind of uh, infections of the mother that might predispose her in the womb to abortion. Other factors, mm -hmm. they are like chronic diseases of the mother, for example, hypertension. And hypertension, a, a mother might, you know, the pregnancy might go to almost term, mm. but if she, she uh, gets hypertension in pregnancy, it is a risk factor for abortion. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is a risk factor for abortion. Therefore, <coughs> uh, hypertension is one. Diabetes is also another factor. And, uh, you know, there the, the are a series of them, but um, I'm giving those major, major examples. Mm -hmm. So those are two. Then there is uh, <coughs> psychological issues of the mother, such as stress. Mm -hmm. I know this is common. Mm -hmm. eh, psychological issues. Uh, the mother might be distressed in one way or another because of the factors she might be going through, and it might dispose her to abortion. There are other issues like drugs and chemical agent mm -hmm. these these you know, they are drugs which they are not they, they are contraindicated in pregnancy and therefore if she takes them the kind of action the body has or the body reacts towards uh, those drugs might lead to abortion and now other chemical fact, uh, agents like alcohol mm -hmm. tobacco in such kind of abortions, uh, such kind of chemical agents. Another cause uh, that might cause spontaneous abortion in, from the mother is trauma. Trauma, by trauma I mean maybe she fell. Mm. And therefore, 
<coughs> the, the abdomen or the stomach was hurt, it might predispose to abortion. Or trauma, in, 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 I might term trauma now, in, in the medical field, apart from falling or getting uh, being hurt on the abdomen, the, maybe at one point in life she went through surgery that involved the pelvis. And you know the pelvis is the one that is holding the, 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 the womb, mm. it's holding the, the fallopian tube, you know, the cervix and everything. Mm. And therefore, if there was a trauma to an organ of the pelvis, it might also predispose the mother to pregnancy. So those are the major groups of, uh, of pregnancy, uh, of, of, of our factors that might lead to spontaneous abortion. Mm. And the last one, before I forget, it's uterine deformities. Uterine deformities, for instance, the uterus, you know, <coughs> naturally and normally, the uterus is one. Mm -hmm. it, it's supposed to be one. Mm. But you'll find in some factors, uh, during development of the mother, while they were, uh, the, the mother was in the womb of her own mother, there was those developmental factors we are talking about. And therefore, her, her uterus or the womb was, was divided into two. It is one womb, but it's like there is something that is separating it. It's called septic uterus. It's mm -hmm. a, come, it may, it, 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 there are two halves. Eh? Mm -hmm. So that might predispose. Because, uh, you know, the, the, even, even the, the baby will be surprised on, on, and, and where am I supposed to attach myself on? And uh, another factor of the uterus is, eh, you, it's something that's called biconnoid uterus, whereby every ovary is connected to a uterus. And you know there are two ovaries mm -hmm. on each side. Mm -hmm. So both of them, they come and connect to one uterus through those fallopian tubes. But now, in this specific matter, every ovary comes, it's connected to one part of the uterus. So it's like there are two uteruses, one on this side and the other yeah. on this side. Mm -hmm. Which means, uh, if there are two, they won't mature to the point they were supposed to mature. And therefore, they might predispose uh, to spontaneous uh, abortion. So those are, the, those are the major, major causes of spontaneous abortion. And uh, <coughs> at least now our viewer is aware that these things do happen and uh, some, some are not intentional. Thank you. Now, mm. I, I would want to know before you, we, we, we leave that uh, point, mm. now for this, um, you said uh, the deformity, uh -huh. the uterus, mm. is that something treatable? Is there a way to remove the, now the separation, the wall? Is there a way to make the uterus one? Okay. Or that's a permanent uh, problem? That, that might be an issue. Mm -hmm. But I, maybe on a management of factors that might lead to abortion, we, might, we will look into it. Mm -hmm. I know we look into it. Okay. Yes. The other one is the chromosomal abnormality. Uh -huh. No, that one, you see, if the chromosomes, the, 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 the father's chromosomes and the, maybe the mother's mm. chromosome, now there's that abnormality. Mm. Now, what happens? Is there a way again to, have, to rectify that or that's now habitual abortions? By the way, ah, thank you for reminding me this. Uh, you know, before a, a woman and a, a man comes into contact and uh, they think of settling down, mm. it's good, uh, you, last time we said it's good for them to have sexual health status mm -hmm. you, you, so that they can rule out those sexually transmitted dis diseases. Mm. Now, today, I will advise couples, it's in order that they seek medical advice or cancel so that they can they can be able to understand their blood groups mm -hmm. you know uh, you've 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 talked about chromosomes but uh, something i've remembered there is one very common cause of spontaneous abortion mm -hmm. it's called blood group incompatibility mm -hmm. whereby if the mother is racist factor for example i am a positive mm -hmm. and you are a negative there is a risk factor of an abortion because of something that is called agglutination. Mm -hmm. 
and therefore it is in order that both both uh, partners should at least uh, at one point in life seek medical attention and uh, get to know their blood groups before it's too late because if you know as uh, you know uh, in as much as the mother is negative there is a factor of uh, abortion because of the agglutination but if she is positive so i mean resus positive and the man is negative there is no issue mm -hmm. you know as long as she has if it, may it be b positive may it be a positive may it be all positive she is okay mm -hmm. but as long as she is either of a b or o negative then there is a risk factor and therefore there is an injection that they are given mm -hmm. it's called an anti d anti d antigen mm -hmm. that helps to to sustain the pregnancy to turn mm -hmm. if the mother is negative mm -hmm. the, that, that is all i'm saying it's very important they know their blood group because it might help sustain the pregnancy Oh, yes. that means that uh, no, the, the understanding mm. of one's blood group, it's the, 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 the couple should know their blood group. It's true. And that's before thinking of even having a baby. Uh, so even, even, even in the dating period, if, mm. if their goal is marriage, and uh, you know in marriage that is where they settle and they have babies, eh? the best thing is they know their blood group. So the knowledge of blood group may, may, may just... Uh, just uh, secure the baby, mm -hmm. and uh, but uh, now, now when it's it's it has happened, mm -hmm. now the baby must uh, the the pregnancy must be terminated. Now, if if mm -hmm. the if they came to discover uh -huh. when the, late the lady was yes, pregnant. when the mother is pregnant, uh -huh. that she is recess negative, mm -hmm. that is now when they are given that injection called anti D antigen. Oh, it okay. might sustain, kind of sustain the, the pregnancy, the pregnancy and the consequent uh, the, 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 the pregnancies to follow. Uh -huh. It saves a lot. Oh, mm. so, so it's not like every other time they will need the injection? No, no. Just yeah, they just need to follow up. Oh, mm. uh, we are learning. We are learning a lot. Mm. So, uh, there are now the types of uh, those spontaneous abortions and mm. uh, the symptoms. Mm. What what could tell that uh, these are miscarriage, these mm. are spontaneous abortion, su such things, uh, and how would we manage that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Before then, I can see there are people who are tuned. Mm -hmm. I see Irene Nyawira. Irene Nyawira Waroi. She's asking a question: mm. Is age a factor in miscarriage? Oh. Yes. Yeah. Good to know. Age is a factor. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, mm. in a woman who is 40 years old, there is a risk, uh, there is a two times the risk, risk factor mm -hmm. than a 20 years old woman. Okay. Yes. So age is a factor. So age is a factor. Yes. There's more risk. Or in older age mm -hmm. than in younger age. Okay. And I hope I hope you answer, Irene. She is. Yes. I want to believe she is. And uh, continue sending us your questions, your mm. comments, your reactions. And uh, it's Nisi Television on Facebook, Nisi Television on YouTube. And of course, we are live on our TV channel on Signet. Uh, we'll be continuing with the same discussion. Now we'll be coming that for uh, to see the types of, types uh, of those spontaneous, spontaneous abortions mm. and the symptoms. Mm. And how do you manage such kind of, uh, of, of issues. And uh, so we are going to take a short break and then we'll be back. Thank you for being tuned. Your happiness begins with your health. I'll be your host, Dr. Delik Wanchiro, bachelor's degree in clinical medicine and surgery. Join me here in Nisi Television every Wednesday morning starting from 7.30 to 9 a.m. 
where we'll be talking issues, matters health, sanitation, and well-being. I'll also be bringing on board other medical practitioners and specialists in different uh, sectors and disciplines of medical health, such as obstetrics and gynecology, pediatrics and child health, sanitation, environmental and occupational health. And we'll be looking on issues, diseases, their causes, signs and symptoms, that is the manifestation, management, complications, and prevention. Nikiwaletea wasanii mbalimbali ya wa nyimbo za injili chukukizi na walio bobea usikose kuungana nami ili kwamba tubarikiwe kwa pamoja Men, 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 this is Man's Book, right here on Nisi TV, and this is a forum that we'll be discussing about men issues, we'll be discussing about the boy child issues, we'll be discussing about man holistically. What do you eat as a man? What do you drink as a man? That is nutrition for you as a man. Holistically, how is your lifestyle? How is your spiritual life? We have been brought up knowing that men don't cry. We have been brought up with a certain perspective about men. And here we'll try to demystify masculinity. We'll try to talk and have the relevant and um, the things that are happening with men to help you as a man. And for you as a person who lives with a man, this is also your show because it will help you understand men more. So keep it here on Man's Brook, right here on Missy TV. And I'll be your host, Pastor King. Welcome to the doctor's desk where your happiness begins with your health. I'll be your host, Dr. Delic Wanchiro, bachelor's degree in clinical medicine and surgery. Join me here in Nisi Television every Wednesday morning, starting from 7.30 to 9 a.m., where we'll be talking issues, matters health, sanitation, and well-being. I'll also be bringing on board other medical practitioners and specialists in different uh, sectors and disciplines of medical health such as obstetrics and gynecology, pediatrics and child health, sanitation, environmental and occupational health. And we'll be looking on issues, diseases, their causes, signs and symptoms, that is the manifestation, management, complications, and prevention. Yes, we are back and we are continuing with our discussion today. Learning matters miscarriage and abortion and I want to believe that uh, now you have understood abortion in a different way and uh, as you continue you'll be able to learn and to understand it even better. We are live on Facebook and YouTube. This is Edith Kamande and with me is Dr. Derek Wanjiro and uh, he is enlightening us on so many issues and things. It's reproductive health and it's good that uh, we all know for ourselves and even for our family members and even for our friends so that uh, you know when we are enlightened the community is enlightened so now we have learned of the types of uh, abortions and the the how they occur the wh what may bring a uh, miscarriage rather than abortion and now we want to learn as uh, from where we stopped mm. Uh, those types of spontaneous abortions okay. and uh, the causes, the symptoms, and how does someone manage such? Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe for someone who was not here while we were starting, mm. there are three categories of miscarriage. Yes. There is spontaneous, yes. there is induced, mm -hmm. and there is a repetitive or habitual. Mm. So now we are on uh, spontaneous 
miscarriages or abortions. Mm. Uh, there, are, there are six broad types of these miscarriages. Mm -hmm. There is complete abortion, there is incomplete abortion, there is threatened abortion, there is inevitable abortion, there is missed abortion, and there is septic abortion. <coughs> complete, incomplete, missed, septic. Uh, threatened, so, uh, threatened and inevitable. Okay. Yes. All of them are abortion. Yes. At the end of the day, the, 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 the pregnancy will be terminated. It's only in one that is not. The threatened. Uh -huh. let, uh, no, let's, let's see yeah. how that no, goes. Let's huh? understand so in complete, in, in complete abortion, mm -hmm. complete, as the word says, it means that all the products of pregnancy have been terminated. Mm -hmm. All products of pregnancy have to be terminated. And therefore, uh, you, 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 while you're doing an exam, mm -hmm. you realize that those signs and symptoms of pregnancy, they've, they've reduced or they are not even there. Mm -hmm. There is no fetal activity. If you, if you view using ultrasound, the, uh, the gestational, uh, gestational sac of the womb, there is nothing. There might be little or no pervaginal bleeding mm -hmm. because it is complete. And uh, <coughs> other signs of pregnancy, they are gone. The, 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 the abdomen is not increasing in size as it should be. Mm -hmm. it, uh, and therefore that is what we call complete, complete. abortion, which means all products of mm. pregnancy, mm. they have been expelled, they mm. have been uh, terminated. Incomplete is now the opposite. Mm. It means that they are retained products of pregnancy. There are some that were terminated, but mm. they are retained products in the womb. Mm -hmm. And therefore, while you're doing an exam, examination, you'll find that the cervical os, there is something that is called the cervical os, that is the opening. Mm of the cervix to the uterus. So that the cervical os will be opened. Mm. And uh, this, this woman will be having a continuous flow of bleeding. A continuous flow of bleeding mm. that might contain clots. Clots, they are those blood components that have, you know, they, 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 they are combined together. Uh, uh, for example, let me use a Kiswahili name Dami Meshikana, mm. so that is what we call clots. Mm -hmm. So she might be experiencing such. So there is an open cervical os, mm. there is continuous flow of bleeding, she is experiencing lower abdominal pains with cramps. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what are the things? On ultrasound, there will be retained products of pregnancy in the womb. So that is incomplete. Mm -hmm. Then there is now the threatened, threatened abortion. Mm -hmm. Threatened abortion, <coughs> it's, it, it's, it's not as an abortion as per se, mm -hmm. because the baby is in, in the stomach, but the woman is experiencing lower abdominal pains, and she is experiencing cramps and contractions like of a woman who is ready to deliver. Mm. The, the, uh, the, those are the kind of pain that we see it's increasing in intensity and frequency and the pain is radiating to the back mm -hmm. so she'll be experiencing such and the, the reason it's called threatened is because pervaginally there is spotting of blood spotting mm -hmm. not continuous blood spotting that is why it is called threatened the, the, the baby is not terminated, mm. but there was a threatening issue of the baby being terminated. Okay. And therefore, uh, for you to be able to, uh, so, so uh, on, on ultrasound, you'll find that the, 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 the fetus is in the womb, there is heart activity, which means the fetus is alive, mm -hmm. only that there was that factor of uh, th that is threatening fact of abortion, but the fetus is okay. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the major management for this uh, <coughs> kind of abortion is ideally bed rest. The, we, we encourage them to take 
bed rest mm -hmm. maximum and if the mother is in anxiety we give them drugs we call sedatives and if she is in pain we give her uh, we give them painkillers or analgesics mm -hmm. so that is threatened abortion then the reverse of threatened abortion comes in that we call inevitable abortion mm -hmm. so inevitable abortion is it, it is started like a threatened abortion but at the wrong end it will be terminated so yes it is the threatened abortion mm -hmm. but now uh, it has ended up in in abortion okay so that is so why why would it need to be terminated <coughs> yes why would it need to be terminated all those factors that we we, we talked about mm -hmm. all those uh, causes of spontaneous oh, it's also spontaneous yes it mm -hmm. they, they are all in spontaneous oh, yeah. and more so something that we call cervical incompetence mm. cervical incompetence or cervical insufficiency mm. th which means the the cervical the cervical tissues they are weak to sustain the pregnancy mm. so the as as the baby is growing mm. and you know the more the baby is growing the abdomen is enlarging and therefore there is pressure mm. so if the cervical tissues they are weak it means they won't be able to sustain the pregnancy therefore they will give way and that is how abortion comes about okay what would we can cervical 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 those those cervical tissues mm. they are so uh, we were looking uh, we were looking at it on some uh, in a repetitive but uh, let me just say it here mm -hmm. cervical incompetency or insufficiency mm -hmm. might be caused by something like we uh, we talked about trauma for example, mm. if the mother has ever had uh, gone surgery, mm -hmm. then uh, the bones or the ligaments or the tendons, those, you know, those, those, those things that uh, they, they bring together, mm -hmm. the, the cervix and all the, the, the pelvic organs together, mm. which means there, there was an injury. That is what makes the tissues to be weak. Whatever is holding the the, the yeah. those the, the tissues mm. is weak, so it, they are not strong enough to sustain. Yeah. So the major the major issue here is maybe the the head trauma, maybe uh, a surgery that was done before mm -hmm. around the pelvis or in the lower abdomen. So that is the major cause. It can cause that trauma. It is cause, but okay. <coughs> it is something that can be taken care of. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We look at it on the repetitive. Mm -hmm. abortion then and that's inevitable yeah, that so that is inevitable mm -hmm. it started as threatened abortion mm -hmm. but the baby was not terminated yet mm -hmm. but now it the, it ended up into uh, in abortion in true right. abortion mm -hmm. so the fifth one is called missed abortion so there is complete incomplete threatened inevitable mm -hmm. then missed abortion missed abortion it is that abortion whereby the the womb or the gestational sac carries a dead child mm -hmm. yes the baby is in the womb mm -hmm. but is dead okay yes so that is what is called mm -hmm. mixed abortion and uh we we what come to make a, that? Uh, we, we come to we come to make such a uh, diagnosis mm -hmm. when the mother comes maybe for clinic mm -hmm. and then they are complaining of the baby is not moving. You know, there are no feet of movement. Mm. I can't. I can't feel the baby kicking and such kind of things. The, you know, uh, I am now on my twenty weeks, and the the, the 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 abdomen is not enlarging because if the baby is dead, it means the, the baby won't grow. Mm. So the abdomen or the stomach will be the same. Mm -hmm. uh, th therefore, th those are such of the kind of issues the mother comes in with. And therefore, when we 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 screen, mm. more so using an ultrasound, we find there are no fetal heart activities. There are no activity, mm -hmm. and that is how we make a diagno diagnosis of fetal death. And uh, the most distress distressing factor here is, eh, if if the baby was dead and the mother was not aware, mm. she start she, uh, she starts uh, experiencing some pervaginal discharge. That is very false, Mary. Mm. It, and it is, it is, 
it is the it is that that smell of something that is rotten. Okay. Yes, so it is very distressed. Uh, it, it 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 is foul smelling. Mm. It is very uh, distressing mm. because you you can you can imagine such kind of a a smell. Mm. Yes, so uh, it is. It, it those are the kind of signs that mother the mother comes in with, mm -hmm. and then we we end up making a diagnosis of missed abortion. And the last one, mm. the last type of abortion in the spontaneous category, it's what we call septic abortion. Septic abortion means it is all abortions, whether it is complete, whether it is incomplete, whether it is threatened, whether it is inevitable. Mm. If all of them, there is, there is a factor of infection, if they are complicated by infection, Mm. You know, it is called aseptic, aseptic abortion. So it might, you know, they might have had complete abortion, mm. but an infection came along. It is called septic. They might have had an incomplete, mm -hmm. and an infection came along. It is called septic abortion. So it's all of those in, uh, abortions, mm -hmm. but they have been complicated by an infection. So that's septic. Yeah, and it is that is very life threatening. Mm. Yes, because uh, if it is an infection that might treat to last time we talked about peritonitis, mm. that you know uh, the the contents of the womb now they will start leaking to other parts of the body and also the ab the stomach or the abdomen. It may lead to uh, to peritonitis because sepsis. Due to infection. <coughs> yes, it is an infection. Mm -hmm. So it, the infection leads to something that is called inflammation. Mm. So it, it, it is, it is life-threatening. Mm -hmm. And mind you, mm -hmm. it might lead to the removal of the entire uterus, which is oh. called hysterectomy. Is that serious? It is that serious. Now, for especially that septic, mm. now that, that one sounds so, so serious and life-threatening, mm. uh, no, when does when does a doctor maybe diagnose that? Okay, <coughs> so when the woman, when the, the the pregnant woman comes to our clinic mm -hmm. with the signs of all signs of pregnancy, mm -hmm. or maybe she experienced abortion, or maybe the the pregnancy is still there, for example, in threatened abortion, but they come with something like fever. You know, fever is the first sign of an infection. High oh. temperatures. Is a pregnant woman? In every person. Okay. Fever is, it's like headache. Headache mm. tells you it, it's this a sign something, of something, something more. that you need to, to look into. Mm -hmm. So fever is the first symptom mm -hmm. of an infection. Mm -hmm. So the woman will come with fever. Mm. Then the woman will come with such kind of false smelling, uh, for false smelling discharge. Mm -hmm. She will come with joint pains, and she is pregnant, mm -hmm. and it is in the early stages of pregnancy, mm -hmm. which means these are abnormal signs and symptoms. Mm. So when she comes with such, we set them for tests. For example, urine, uh, urine, uh, urine test, mm -hmm. where we look at specific uh, microorganisms mm -hmm. that might lead to the infection. We also do blood tests. And we look for specific microorganisms that might be the ones that cause the sepsis or the septic abortion. Mm -hmm. And uh, the moment we realize that it is those infections, uh, it is those microorganisms that are present, now we manage medically. So she has to be admitted because that is not something she can be managed at once sudden she goes home. Mm -hmm. So the best uh, approach is a uh, we use intravenous lines, cannulas. Eh? We we use them because uh, those drugs they you know they, they, they leach the system faster and efficient more than uh, that, other than taking the per oral tabs. Yes, the action is faster. Okay. So we give them those uh, those IV antibiotics, and then if it was a specific a specific factor or microorganism that was causing it, we manage it. So we manage in accordance to the causing the causing agent. Okay, now yes. that you will have a 
diagnosed yes. which exactly mm. it is. Mm. Oh. So now that's uh, septic. Mm. We've talked of um, this. So for septic, it's uh, something uh, the baby can be saved. Yes. The baby can be saved after you've done that. Uh, and she's admitted and she's given that. Now in septic, mm -hmm. septic also happens in those abortions that have already taken place. So whatever oh. causes septic, it's for example they are retained product of pregnancy. So if those product of pregnancy they were left unnoticed. Mm. They might start rotting so and decaying. Uh -huh. So it is that decaying and rotting that mm. predisposes them to an infection. So like septic is a bad deal, it's miscarriage, yes. abortion has already happened. Yes. So uh, now you're treating, you're just treating the person. We, we are managing mm. to avoid complications mm. such as having to remove the, the entire uterus. Okay. So you find that m many of them come back mm. after we, they, they have been discharged after <coughs> the, 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 the abortion they had after they've been discharged, mm. they, come, they come back with now the septic abortion if they were not managed mm -hmm. well for the, uh, the, the, the initial abortion they had before. Oh. Yeah, so it is, it is a kind of a complication in itself, septic abortion. Oh, it's a kind of complication from abortion. Mm. Okay, mm. now there's uh, the missed one. <coughs> the missed one we've said that uh, that one is, uh, now that's the only place where the baby is still safe. In threatened. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's threatened, okay. Yes. It, it, it's in only in threatened, mm -hmm. where the baby is still in the abdomen, uh, in, in the womb. Oh, missed uh, the, the baby missed is already the, yeah, dead, dead right? in the womb. Okay, so mm. it's just a matter of removing the baby, mm. the, the dead uh, fetus, and that's it. Now the complete uh, uh, abortion, uh -huh. there it, it's just, that person doesn't have any complications. As long as it is a complete abortion, mm. we, we only do an examination, it's called speculum examination, to just make sure that nothing was left. Okay. And after we've done that, because we've already exposed the mother, mm. b b because of doing that exam, we send, home, we send them home with antibiotics to cover for any infection. Oh. So nothing much is done to them. Well, okay, now no. that sounds spontaneous. Yes. Okay. What are now the types of induced? Induced. Awesome. Now, induced, that is where now <coughs> many, many women, uh, <coughs> I, I think they love that part. Mm -hmm. uh, induced, there are two types. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said there is medical, mm -hmm. the legal, the legal, and the illegal. illegal. So the legal is medical. Mm -hmm. The illegal is the criminal <laughs> abortion. Mm -hmm. So legal abortion, uh, it's the medical abortion where there is even an act in the constitution that allows it. Uh, you, you can only do an abortion in specific uh, indications. So uh, while in medical school we learned on uh, medical ethics and therefore while we were learning about medical ethics that is how we came along Mm. indications for medical termination of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And the major indication is if the pregnancy is, is putting the mother into a risk. If the pregnancy is not favorable to the mother, mm. th there is an indication to terminate it. So that is the major mm -hmm. thing. If it is becoming a bother or an issue to the health of the, the one who is carrying the womb. Mm -hmm. Two, if after screening you realize that there is massive, massive developmental defects of the baby mm -hmm. that can't allow the baby to survive after they are born, mm -hmm. there is also an indication of terminating the pregnancy because mm -hmm. there is no need of carrying the pregnancy. You are in eight weeks of pregnancy, you carry it to 40, mm -hmm. and at the end of it all, after birth, the baby will die. Oh, you, you really should tell that uh, as early as at uh, eight weeks yes. that uh, this, this baby is likely not to survive. So if, if through a screen, mm -hmm. as the screening... So what will lead you to doing that screening? Because uh, that's no, quite it, early. It's normal screening. You, we do normal screening. Every time a woman is coming for clinic, mm. we always do screening through ultrasound. Mm. Yes, yeah, so, so now it is through that normal screening mm -hmm. when we discover those... Uh, those, those developmental defects, mm. we, we, 
Now, before, uh, co constitutionally, before 12 weeks of pregnancy, mm -hmm. the opinion of one doctor to terminate the pregnancy is okay. Mm -hmm. But if the, pre the pregnancy is above 12, but below 20 weeks, the opinion of two doctors can allow for pregnancy mm -hmm. termination. Okay. Yes. So we, it, it, we, it is us who make that decision mm. from the way we've viewed through screening. Mm -hmm. And I also learned somewhere mm -hmm. that even after rape, after rape, mm -hmm. uh, it is, but I, uh, that I learned in, uh, in the, I don't know whether in Kenya it, it is legal, mm. but if a woman was sexually abused and they got pregnant, there is an indication of pregnancy termination if the woman That's gives awesome. consent, mm -hmm. uh, gives consent to it. Mm -hmm. So those are the major, major uh, indications of medical termination, mm -hmm. where us doctors now come in. And then now there is the other illegal. Mm -hmm. So that is the illegal act of uh, termination of pregnancy is what every layman knows as abortion. Mm. I'm a tour member. Mm. So that is how now they do it. And they, they can do it in many, many ways. And in most cases, the illegal abortion is not <coughs> done in the, now the, the approved... In mm. a medical platform. Mm -hmm. Unless the, the mother came and... Uh, they, was they, they, able to convince the, the, the doctor. Uh, and maybe they were given pills. And, they, and then they went home and they took it. It happened at home and therefore when it complicated that is when they came back to the hospital. So, but many of them, they do it before. So they come to hospital when it, 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 they, they've already experienced abortion mm. and there is excessive bleeding. Or they come now to be treated uh, of the complications Thank that you. follows yes. after abortion. Mm. So I in most cases, the only place that the doctor will have an interaction with this person who is uh, terminating the pregnancy legally mm. is maybe when they have issues yes. with the termination. Mm. So they come to you. And, uh, okay, I, any, any action that's taken? Or not? Or, 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 as in, or for them, you just treat <coughs> them as patients? No. Mm -hmm. We, uh, I remember last time we, although, oh no, as much as we, we might seem to be mm -hmm. somehow. It's, it's unlawful. You, you know, it's like we are telling them, you know, whatever you're supposed to, whatever you did, we are now supposed to do it, mm. but we are still going to take care of you anyway, because that is what we do. Mm -hmm. But I know if, you, if you, they were asked, if medical practitioners were asked, they wouldn't even take care of such people who have terminated spontaneously, any, those people who have aborted the child intentionally. Mm -hmm. Because I am one person who cannot advocate for pregnancy termination mm -hmm. if there is no education. I've had uh, friends who came to me and told me my friends want to terminate pregnancy and I told them, you know what, I won't, I, I'm not even going to talk about it from there. Mm -hmm. yeah, let them seek other sources, but I can't do that because it is unlawful. Mm. And you know, as much as you took the Hippocratic oath, mm. it is also unlawful to do that unless it is legal. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we don't scold them, mm. we manage them like any other patient. Mm. Yes. So the management is now when that <coughs> patient comes to you, the complication. Mm. Okay, now we can go to recurrent. Okay. Mm -hmm. On a recurrent, a recurrent uh, or habitual abortion. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, in Kenya, it is, uh, no, in, let me see, in developed countries, mm -hmm. it is two or more consecutive abortions, two or more. In developing countries, it is three or more. It is for it is. I remember we said the the the, 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 the <coughs> definition of uh, miscarriage or abortion. There was that difference of twenty weeks and twenty eight weeks in developed and developing countries. So the repetitive happens when you've lost the first pregnancy, mm -hmm. you've lost the second pregnancy, and now this is the third one you are losing, following each other. That is what we call. Uh, that is what we call repetitive or habitual abortion. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there are factors and uh, major factors. They are common with habitual 
with the spontaneous abortion because you will find their chromosomal abnormalities mm. you will find there is maternal factors such as diseases and infections we talked about them we'll find uterine uterine uh, abnormalities such as a uterus that is divided into two or mm. two uteruses you see mm. uh, cervical incompetence we've talked about that mm -hmm. so those are the major factors that might lead to <coughs> might lead to repetitive Mm. abortion. Mm. So it's almost similar to the causes that are almost similar to the causes of spontaneous only that in this time or in this point it is now consecutive abortions happening every now and then. The first one, the second one, the third one. Mm -hmm. So that is how they are given what the repetitive. Now what, how do you manage that? <coughs> so we manage it according to the cause. Mm -hmm. If it, the cause was cervical incompetence mm -hmm where the cervical tissues are weak to sustain the, the pregnancy, mm. we do something that we call a surgical procedure that we call cervical cartilage. Cervical cartilage means that we suture the cervix. So maybe this is the cervix. So mm. we suture it and then uh, <coughs> we, we, we by those sutures make those tissues somehow strong. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of it is done between 14 and 18 weeks of pregnancy mm -hmm. and it and you can be sure it will carry the pregnancy to term okay. term pregnancy goes from 37 to 40 weeks mm -hmm. that is term pregnancy mm -hmm. so anytime the mother gives birth at that age, that that age mm -hmm. the baby is mature enough mm -hmm. so uh, when we do that cervical cartilage suture mm -hmm. in the uterus mm -hmm. most of it is done with two sutures mm -hmm. I take and call it the pregnancy to term, but there is, uh, there is an indication, there is a risk for the same. Because if the mother experiences labor, true labor, mm -hmm. and uh, she experiences it at, uh, at home, mm -hmm. far from medical setup, you know, you remember there are those sutures. Mm -hmm. <coughs> they, those sutures might cause something we call cervical tear because you know it is it is labor and it comes with contraction mm -hmm. and such as uh, <coughs> such as are like those they call them threads that yeah, it, it is drained uh -huh. it is those it is a needle and a thread uh -huh. so so it you so it, it is it is uh, the muscle or in kiswahili mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so you can imagine if there is a pressure mm -hmm. that is coming with those contractions mm -hmm. it might Cause the cervix to tear, mm -hmm. and it might go, it is now that is called cervical rupture or cervical tear. Mm -hmm. And if it happens, and then the baby is being expelled before they arrive to a medical setup, it may it might also cause uh, the it might cause injury to the baby. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine it is a thread and how sharp they are. Mm -hmm. So it might it might cause injury to the baby. So that that person needs again to be at the at the health facility so yes. that the sutures can be removed. Immediately they they, they, they feel they, they they are trying they are starting to experience signs of true labor mm. because through the cause of the pregnancy mm. they are taught what is signs of true labor and what is signs of false labor. Mm. So the moment they start having those signs, they are encouraged to seek medical attention immediately. Okay. So that if they are at term. Mm -hmm. those sutures, those sutures will be cut, mm -hmm. they'll be removed. Okay. And therefore, even the cervix will relax and give way to a the proper baby. delivery of the baby. Okay. Yes. Ah, so that, that is, okay. so if it was cervical incompetence, that mm -hmm. is how it is taken care of. If there were infections, infections are treated mm -hmm. and taken care of. Mm -hmm. And that is how we prevent, uh, we prevent habitual. a habitual. If it were Resus, remember the resus yeah. factor uh -huh. so where yeah, the mother the mother is negative mm. and they were not aware mm. so if we come to realize that it's because the mother was negative but they were not aware mm -hmm. and we give them that injection of anti d it might save the other pregnancies to come okay mm. uh, this is deep i know that our viewer outside here is learning or rather has learned a lot mm. and now because our time is uh, giving us its back we are going to call 
uh, conclude. And uh, the, the last question maybe mm. is we wind up. Okay. What are the, the complications of abortions? What are complications that uh, somebody may, uh, may, may experience? Okay. With miscarriage, with abortions, uh, whichever. <coughs> I, uh, we might have tackled this within the course of the, yeah, the, the, the talking. Eh? Mm -hmm. So abortion, mm. one, in abortion you realize that they will bleed. So there is something that we call post abortion bleeding. Mm -hmm. So post abortion bleeding means that this mother, you know, they were managed for abortion, they went back home, mm -hmm. that at home they started bleeding. Mm -hmm. And there are causes of post abortion bleeding. Maybe mm -hmm. there was retained, you, you remember we said the there is retained of product pregnancy. of pregnancy, uh -huh. or there was cervical tear, mm -hmm. or uterine tear. Mm -hmm. or vaginal tear during, uh, during the course of abortion that was not captured. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they have bleeding disorders. Mm -hmm. They are also bleeding disorders. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, they, you know, if, if they are the retained product of pregnancy uh, which were not captured, they might lead to, they might complicate to something that we call uh, choriocarcinoma. Choriocarcinoma is a kind of, is a kind of cancer mm -hmm. That, ha that 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 start forming in the womb okay. yes in the womb and most of it happens mm. when uh, when the sperm and the ovum came into into contact mm -hmm. the, the product that was formed mm -hmm. it, it it was not a complete a complete child or a baby mm -hmm. it was something that is called a uh, hydatidi form mole you know it is a, you know it's they are, they are, at some point you find they are no part of the baby, mm -hmm. but something is growing in the, in the stomach. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but there is no, there is no it's not fetus, it's not a baby, mm -hmm. but it, something is growing. So if it uh, continues happening... It's called it choriocarcinoma? It, it, no, before it, before it complicates no. to choriocarcinoma, mm -hmm. it's called hydatidiform mold. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, or they are, uh, they are called trophoblastic gestational trophoblastic diseases. So that person, will, their abdomen will be growing normally? You can imagine. So as though they but at some point in life, mm -hmm. it, uh, it will come to a place mm -hmm. where now through those screening, mm -hmm. we shall realize this is not just a normal pregnancy. And then it needs to be removed? Yes. And uh, now if it complicates now, mm -hmm. they can complicate to now what you call choriocarcinoma. It is a kind of cancer. cancer. Yes. When you call it a kind of, does it mean it's not really cancer? It is, it is a cancer in itself. Only that it's mm -hmm. benign, it's not malignant. Mm -hmm. Benign means it's, it, it has not reached to a, a point of it becoming malignant. You know, so there is benign and malignant. So removal of it would just be the removal <coughs> of that cancer? Yes. Okay. It's a, a, the removal is, you remove it with some kind of a, a part of the uterus. It's called hysterectomy. Hi, not hysterectomy, hysterotomy. Mm. And at the same time, uh, before I forget, Many mothers experience something we call fibroids. Mm -hmm. You, you oh, have heard of oh, yeah, fibroids? Yeah. So fibroid is another cause of any type of, a, of abortion. Mm -hmm. Because fibroids, they, they grow mm -hmm. and they occupy the, mm -hmm. the, the, the position or the space of a child. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if one conceives a child mm -hmm. and they, still, they, they have fibroids, when the child is growing mm -hmm. and the fibroid already took some space that the child was the supposed uterus. to grow, mm -hmm. yes, the information that is given back to the brain is that the baby is mature enough to deliver. Mm -hmm. Because you know there is a specific mm -hmm. space that the child is supposed to occupy, mm -hmm. but now the fibroid has occupied it. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the brain responds mm -hmm. to, and, and, and it tells the, 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 the yes, mm -hmm. the baby is ready to deliver, mm -hmm. now you can pave way. And that is how abortion comes in. Okay. So fibroids are also a cause. So if, if fibroid was the cause of abortion, mm. fibroids have to be removed. So fibroids are, are, are treatable, are completely treatable? Yes, they are, they are removed. Oh, okay. Yes. But some of them, they, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are kind of, uh, they, they are kind of, uh, it's called a rubber. Mm -hmm. If it's, a, you know, there are different types of fibroids. If it's a fibroid that is suspended mm -hmm. in, the, in the womb, mm -hmm. The, there is a string that is suspended in it. That womb is clipped, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And therefore, if it is cribbed, it means there will, there will be no blood supply. There will be no blood supply to that, to that fibroid. Mm. So that string that is holding the fibroid will be cut off and the fibroid will fall off. Okay. Yeah, so those are some of the complications. Mm. I want to believe that uh, that one is well, well tackled and well handled. The, the area of miscarriage and abortion, now when you hear the word abortion, at least you won't be closing your ears like uh, this is quite a unlawful. We have learned of the, the, the illegal part of the abortion, which is uh, what we know as abortion, what we have known as abortion. And I want to believe that now you are well enlightened, maybe to enlighten a person around you, or in your family, or a friend. And uh, again, uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. thank you so much for tackling this, this subject so well. And uh, we look forward to learning more from you, mm. even come next week, mm. at the same time, same day. And uh, I want to say that uh, your health, your health is your wealth. And uh, maybe don't, don't look at it like uh, I am not uh, bearing any more child. Just look at it in, in the area of I may meet a person who needs this information. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you. Irene says that she had asked a question. Thank you, Doc, for your response. And VDJTL says congratulations. 20. Yeah, he is. <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in. He's saying that those are very smart insights, Doc. And Francis Grace Official says that uh, good job. And uh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. I thank may you. not be able to read all of them, but we really appreciate you being with us. And we really want to believe that uh, you have learned a lot. And this one brings us to the end of what today's show, the Doctor's Desk here at Nisi Television. Keep tuned in. We have other uh, life transforming shows following after this. And again, uh, let's meet here on Wednesday, same day, 7.30 a.m. with Dr. Derek Wanjiro to learn more and more as we continue. Thank you so much, Doc. You're I'll much give you now this chance uh, yeah. to do the final prayer, okay. even as you do your final remarks. Okay. Thank you so much, Edith. You're welcome. And thank you so much, Director. Our director is called Paul Gregory. Gregory, thank you so much, Director, for uh, being here with us in this program and uh, also taking us through. Thank you so much, Nisi TV, once again, for this opportunity. Uh, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much, my viewers. Thank you so much, those who are following us, those people who are so loyal. God bless you so much. I, those who have tuned in and those who are going to tune in afterwards, I hope this is going to, uh, it has helped you and it is insightful. And uh, the only thing you can help us to make sure this information goes far and wide, mm -hmm. share these. Mm -hmm. Share these, uh, link with as much, as, uh, as much friends as you can so that we can educate all of us and we can, we can all help uh, one another in the community. It is, uh, it is a wonderful moment having you. And I thank God so much for you. And therefore, let us meet next week on Wednesday, starting from 7.30, with such wonderful, insightful information on medical issues. And I know we shall be blessed. May we have a prayer. Our dear and everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are so grateful this morning. Thank you so much because of this day that you've granted unto us. You know, uh, your one tells us that to man belongs the plans of the heart, uh, the, but it is your word that, uh, that, that, that it is your will that prevails. And in Pro uh, Proverbs 16:3, you tell us that we commit our works unto you, and our plans are going to be established. And therefore, this morning we are so grateful for the program we've had. I am very sure that this program has uh, edified someone, and they are going to apply it into helping the community. And how I pray that King of all kings at the end of it all, we are continuing with the great creation account that you called us into. And therefore, from this place, we pray that may you protect us. Some of us are going uh, to a process of work. Some of us are relaxing at home. We pray that may you be together with us, sustain us in your goodness. Until uh, next week, God, when we shall meet here once again, we shall remember to acknowledge you and to honor you and to say that you're worthy for the praises. Go with us, walk with us and protect us for no one else is like you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray, trust, and believe.
Amen. 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 Thank you. See you next week. I've been your host, Edith Kamande, with Dr. Derek Wanjiro here. Asante. Welcome to the Doctor's Desk, where your happiness begins with your health. I'll be your host, Dr. Delik Wanchiro, Bachelor's Degree in Clinical Medicine and Surgery. Join me here in Nisi Television every Wednesday morning, starting from 7.30 to 9 a.m., where we'll be talking issues, matters health, sanitation, and well-being. I'll also be bringing on board other medical practitioners and specialists in different uh, sectors and disciplines of medical health, such as obstetrics and gynecology, pediatrics and ch child health, sanitation, environmental and occupational health. And we'll be looking on issues, diseases, their causes, signs and symptoms, that is the manifestation, management, complications, and prevention. <laughs>